Hi, my name is Jim Byrne, Principal Systems Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies. Today I'm going to go over setting up Microsoft SQL in Commvault. We'll be going over the installation of the client, configuring the client, backing up a sample uh, MySQL database, and restoring a database. Pretty simple. And let's get into the lab now. And here we have the Data Pivot Lab. And I already have a client installed over here, but what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go over the installation of the client. It's pretty easy. Uh, I have a Linux box here that I've already configured with Microsoft SQL in it. And you can see I ran a little PS-EF here, grabbed down Microsoft SQL, and you can see it running. And I also did an ID on my MySQL, the user ID, and you can see user MySQL is a member of group. MySQL. And the, the need, the reason for that is during the installation, uh, you want your software installed with these permissions so that it can access the database. And th this will become clear when I, when I get into doing the install. Okay, let's get started. So we go up here in the Commvault GUI and we click install software. And I've already installed my client, so I'm just going to give this another name. I'm not actually going to do it, but I just want to show you all the settings. So I'm going to do a manual setting and here you can pull the client names from your directory service or you can just type them in and I'm just going to type it in. So the little test machine, click next. In Commvault, you everything comes up from the comm server, but you can set up what they call software caches and this is kind of handy if you have a lot of data centers. You can have software caches in each data center to push out locally, so you don't have to be pushing software across your WAN. But in this case, I'm just going to go right from the CompServe. And then here, this would be the you know, the root user account for the Linux box to do the install. And put in the password. And it's important to note that this is just used for the installation. I know a lot of people freak out when they're, you're putting in root credentials, but it's not saved, it's not cached. It only gets used this one time to install the software. And then here you pick uh, what you want to install. And you don't have to go through trying to figure out, you know, do I need any of these components or whatnot. Cumble's really good. You just click if you want to install Microsoft SQL and it'll figure out the dependencies. And you click Next. And I'm going to put this in my lab group. And you can set up where you want, the, where you want it to go you know, for your particular storage policy you have set up. And then you click Next. And now watch this. When I hit Next, it says, hey, you got to pick that, uh, the group for the database agent. And in here, they'll always say it's something like Convolt or DBA. I had showed you before on that screen that it's MySQL for this case. So there we have MySQL. And we hit Next. And leave that all at the uh, standard and we don't have to do any firewall settings incidentally um, Commvault does a really nice job with fire dealing with firewalls you can go through ports you can go one way both ways set up a proxy this would be another video but one way or another you can get the get the client and the Commvault environment to talk to get the backup done and then say next and you can schedule this if you want sometimes people like to do this maybe you've got a weird you know, change control process where you only can do installs at two in the morning or something. You could schedule it to run and it'll do the install and, you, and you'll get a status the next morning when you come in, whether it was successful or not. And then you hit next. And then it gives a, uh, a nice overview of the options that'll be used for the job. And you can, you know, scroll, scroll down, make sure everything looks like it makes sense to you. And you can see here the component we're installing is MySQL agent. And then you would just click finish. And then when you get done, this is what you'll end up with. It'll be a client just like this. And this is the name of the client. It's actually called MySQL. And there's a file system agent because there's a dependency on that because the backup software needs it to pull log files and stuff. And then there's the Microsoft SQL agent. Now the agent installs onto the client. The, you know, the Commvault environment will talk to that agent and then the agent talks to the database you know, through through API calls to Microsoft SQL. All right, so the first thing you got to do is, is configure the instance. And the, my instance name here is called LD. 
and I'm going to go here and say properties. Now my, my install was like vanilla right out of the box. I just, you know, when you go into, into uh, CentOS and you're doing an install and you can pick you want a database, that's all I did. So if, if that's what you did, then your settings will be very similar to mine here. So the instance name is LD. The uh, MySQL um, binaries are in user bin. The log directory is in var live MySQL. The config file is in etsy my.conf. And the socket file is in var live MySQL mysql.sock. And that's, and I usually leave this on enabling auto discovery. If you're in a, an environment where you're adding databases all the time, it's great. It'll automatically pick them up and back them up into the default sub client. I'll go through that when we, when we drop, get down to the next level into the sub client. And here for accounts, this is the system administrator user for the box. And I'm using the, uh, the root account. You may have something different, but it's basically a system administrator for the box. And these, these do get saved. So sometimes if you're in an environment where you rotate passwords, you might want to set up a service account for this. And then for security, this would be for Commvault users who you want to have in here. I'm a master, so I don't have to list anything, but you might have some DBAs you want to give access to. So when they go into this um, Comcell GUI, they would see just their databases. That's more for a self-service type thing. So if they want to pick particular databases when they want to back them up and stuff or do restores themselves. And then for the storage device, this is like, it's a higher level. I'm over here. So anything you do here, We'll set the defaults for all the sub clients below it. And here you can do um, for command line database backup. So you can use um, this particular storage policy or for log backup. So you can see where that wants to go. No, this stuff can be overridden inside of here if you want to. Okay, so let me just hit cancel. And we'll, we're going to drop down a level. Now, you'll see I have two sub clients here. This default Subclient. This one is used to pick up any databases you add. Because remember, I checked that box for auto discovery, so they'll all fall under here. And this one I have called Juke. Let's take a look at that. And the name of this will become apparent here in a second. Uh, the name of the subclient is Juke. And if you look under content, the name of the database is called Music. So it's Jukebox. And we're going to back up this database to a storage device called G1 30 Days. And what I'd like to show you is when you set this up for the first time, this is empty. So you click configure and this too would be empty. And then you click discover and it'll go through and find all the databases. And you can see music, I'm backing it up to, whoops, I wanna do that. I'm backing it up to the sub client called Juke. The rest of these guys are all going to the default sub client. So you can see I have a, a Jukebox database I've got round cube mail set up, got a little test database, and then the MySQL um, system database. So that's all really there is to setting this up. Again, it's just give it a name, pick your databases, pick where you want it to go. Easy. All right, now we've installed the client, configured the client, we're now ready to do a backup. So now let's do a backup. So I'm going to say backup. And under backup, you can do a full backup and incremental backup. And you see this box down here that says logs. If I had logging set up, that would be active and I could pick it, but I don't have logs set up. And down here, it has an option for not truncating the log. Sometimes you want to do this. Most of the time you don't. The default, so the default behavior for any uh, full backup for a database, whether it's Oracle, MySQL, um, you know, Microsoft SQL, whatever, is to truncate the logs and you do a full backup. And here, when I initiate the uh, backup job, we're going to run it immediately, or I could go through and schedule this if I want to, and you can go through and, you know, pick what day of the week you want to use and that kind of thing. Or sometimes it might even just be a one-time thing. You can pick this to just run one time. Maybe you're going to, um, and, you know, do some software upgrades the next morning when you come in and you want to you know kick off in the middle of the week, middle of the week a full backup just so you have it before you do a uh, your uh, uh, patching or whatever okay but in our case here I'm just going to run this right now so I'm going to say okay and now under job controller you'll see the backup has started the name of the computer is MySQL the agent type is MySQL the sub client that's running was called Juke doing a full backup 
And this tells you the phase of the backup job. So right now we're in the backup phase. And I'm going to open this up so you can see what's going on. And Commvault will go through and tell you how fast it's going. This is kind of handy if you're just trying to get an idea how long it's going to take. And then when you click here under streams, when this thing starts to go, we'll see a stream pop up in here. And there it goes. It's starting to go. Now this thing is in the kilobytes, so it's, it's not very big. This is going to be a quick uh, backup. So we'll let this run. And then what I'm going to do is I, I've run a series of uh, backups already today. So we'll kick off a restore from that. So you can see this is already 50%, 57% of the way done. And when it hits 80%, you can see it's doing an archive index and saving information about the backup so you can uh, find it to do your, your restores. And I think if you caught that real quick at the end where it said size of the application, I think it said 2.6 megabytes for the, for the whole thing. It's not that big. All right, so that's done. So now we've shown a backup, very easy to do. Now let's do a restore. I'm going to pick Juke. And I'm going to say browse. Uh, where are we here? Where's my backup history? Whoops. I think I am on. Oh, I got to go up a level. My bad. I click here so on the instance level and view the uh, backup history. Boom. And I'm going to say, I just want to look at the fulls. So we're we'll running a bunch of backups today. <laughs> All right. So let's say somebody calls you and says, hey, you know, uh, somebody messed up the music database can, and they did it at five o'clock. Can you do it? Get restore it from that four o'clock uh, backup. So you're like, yeah, sure thing. So we'll do a restore. So you view the content. There's my instance, LD. And I'll take a second to pull the index. And then what you'll see here is you'll see the database. And right now it's just pulling it back. Shouldn't take too long. Let me do a little cleanup here too while it's doing that. Get too much stuff open. There. All right, so now we're going to do a restore of the currently selected. Let me click that. You got to select it. Recover all selected. And again, it, it gives you some options in here when you do the restore. It actually um, uses the account credentials you gave it. See how it says online? That tells you it's talking to the database that it can actually do the restore. And down here, it gives you some options. I'm not going to do logs because I don't have any. And, but if I did have logs, you can notice down here, you could do a point in time recovery. So what would happen is you'll do a full restore and if you've got incrementals, it'll restore those. And then it'll restore the log backups and roll the database uh, to in point in time to get you there. And you can see it's pretty granular. You can go right down hours, minutes, right down to the second at what you want. And then over here, it you, same thing. You can do it right now or you can schedule it. And this is kind of handy if you want to make a copy of a database, maybe you're going to restore it to another Microsoft SQL Server. You could set it to run at like four in the morning when there's nothing going on in the environment. So you don't hammer the network, you know, during the middle of the day or something like that. So you can schedule your restore from whenever you need it. Or I've worked at um, uh, data warehouse companies and we used to uh, use Commvault to um, restore databases every Sunday. So we had a copy of production to run testing against because you don't want to run you know, lots of testing queries against production. You'd be slowing it down when people are actually trying to use it. So it's a great way to make a, a test database and schedule it once a week or whatever. It's kind of handy. All right, so let's click OK. And here it's telling me you're going to go to MySQL 1 and it's going to go to LD for the instance. Yep, and that's exactly where I want to go. And then we'll go over here. And there's our restore. And it's running. Let me open it up. And probably not going to get any numbers here because this thing is so small. But it takes a little while for it to get going. It has to talk to the database. It's going to delete the old database. And then I'm going to write over it. There we go. It's already cranking. We should have a, there's a stream. And this is going to be done very quickly. And I think if I look here, I might be able to see the size of it. And it's done. All right, so now I've restored the database and you're all set and it's online and you can 
go ahead and use it. It's very quick. All right, so let me go back here just to give a quick summary. Just to summarize, we've gone through um, installing the client. It's just basically, you know, fill out the prompts and, and uh, provide root credentials so it can do the install. Configuring the client is very easy. You just have to go through and set the various paths that pertain to your database environment. And then backing up the database, we went through how to uh, browse the backup history and you can pick a particular date and time for, for where you'd like to pull that backup from. And we also went over uh, logging if you, uh, if you do have that set up. And then we've gone over how to restore a database and that's it, very easy. Okay, and again, uh, my name is Jim Byrne, Principal, Principal Systems Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, send us an email at comvault at datapivottech.com. And uh, we're going to be putting up more of these videos, so please click subscribe on our channel so you can subscribe and uh, get notices as we send out more of these um, videos. And if, you have, if you're shorthanded and you need help, we have professional services that can do these installs for you and, uh, you know, bang them right out and just, you know, get that checkbox done. So again, you know, James Byrne, Principal Systems Engineer, Data Technologies, feel free to drop us a line if you need help with anything. All right. Thank you.